Ten years ago, my husband cheated on me. At that time, we had been married for about four years. My son was 2.3 years old. I won't write about the pain I went through, about the lies. It's obvious. The girl with whom the affair happened was a subordinate. We were in our 30s at the time. She was 25. She was married to a very wealthy guy. He divorced her after he found out about the affair. Her husband sort of broke up with her. We had a reconciliation. He quit his good job, to which, by the way, he was appointed by my father and returned to his previous place of work as a doctor in a polyclinic. Financially, it was very hard. From the first days of married life, my parents helped us. After the betrayal, my husband reluctantly returned to the family, as I think, under pressure from relatives. Soon my maternity leave was over. I was looking for possible part-time jobs. So was my husband. But from the first days of family life, there was no common family budget. It turned out that his money was only at his disposal and mine, and my parents' money was ours. We lived in the apartment my parents bought for us. I was not happy with this situation because I had a feeling that my husband was hiding money, saving, preparing for another life without me and my son. I tried to discuss it. My husband agreed in words, but in fact, everything remained unchanged. On this ground, there were a lot of lies, respectively, scandals, kicked out, we broke up, then reconciled, which I regret now. All this time, the infidelity stood between us. My husband didn't feel guilty, calling it a ridiculous affair in flirting. This all went on for over eight years. I worked with a psychologist. Eventually, I decided to try to forgive because he is a wonderful, loving father. I learned to keep quiet, but the triggers were periodically triggered and reminded me of the meanness. Then my husband got a promotion. We moved into a new apartment in a nice neighborhood, purchased again by my parents, but arranged, of course, for me as a gift. The planned pregnancy came. My husband was caring, attentive, gradually began to buy groceries, took care of all the expenses for my son. Yes, yes, I considered it an achievement. At eight months, we had a stillborn baby girl. I don't know how I survived this period. And work with a therapist started again, as I was just going crazy after my daughter's death. My husband got another very serious promotion. He was all at work, of course. He forgot about his daughter very quickly. And then came the late calls from female colleagues, lying, twisting. I did not catch him cheating, although I understand that he had already managed to learn how to code. To my attempts to explain that I did not like it, that it hurt me, he answered that he was lying for my peace of mind, that he did not have anyone, and that I needed treatment. I got tired of it, so I kicked him out. It got even worse, since my son is 12, he misses his daddy, and is very worried. With great difficulty we reconciled, and decided to go to a psychologist together. I went, he did not go under the pretext of work. Three months later he called me again, had business dinners, took my displeasure nervously, manipulated the child slyly. Another scandal and separation. All the time I was having problems with my health, as a consequence of a tragedy, hence expensive tests, examinations, regular monitoring. I paid for everything myself. But after the last reconciliation, I put the question straight. The problem is common, so we will solve it together. Be kind, now take a material contribution. And then it started. My husband offers to be watched by the same doctors whose negligence killed my daughter in public clinics, where the regents simply do not, and the doctors just do not care. My husband gives lip service to everything, but when it comes to the case, he says, I'm not a printing press. Although his position has very high salaries, and all this time in the lull, we were preparing for a pregnancy. We are 40 years old, not much chance. And at some point triggers a hard trigger, 
which literally blew my mind with the memories of betrayal. And a clot of betrayal, lies, meanness, and wild stinginess began to unravel. In just a few seconds, I saw a strange, two-faced narcissist Alphonse next to me. He disgusted me at the thought of touching him. I didn't throw him out for my son's sake. I moved to another room. We live like neighbors. We do not swear. We say hello. We correspond on everyday problems. My son worries a lot. He tells him that he loves mom very much, that mom needs to cool down and everything will be the same. But I understand that there is no love between us. I don't want to be with him anymore. And he repulses me as a man. Working with a therapist after the tragedy, I set myself the goal to find myself, to nurture the core that I never had, and it seems to succeed. Now I have no faith or respect for him. In my eyes, he is a talentless narcissist with a low intellect who only knows how to lick useful people's places. I can no longer and do not want to be comfortable even for my son. I know that I have been a fool all these years, but I can't change that. The realization is coming that I want him to leave on his own. For the first time in years, I began to think not about changing or punishing him, but about how I could make myself happy. There is no jealousy or longing for him. We are getting a divorce. My mother hired her friend's son to work for us. For years, they had only talked on the phone and very rarely, so we never saw this guy until he came to work for us. He turned out to be a nice, sociable guy, but at the same time, a bit of a nerd and a big opinion of himself. His dream is to become a boss as soon as possible. He tries to master his new job as soon as possible and pesters all the employees with questions about what their responsibilities are, whether he can't look through the documents of their work in the past. The behavior is silly, and some even thought he was sent in with some kind of check from management. And so I developed a strange relationship with him. He started pestering me with conversations. He started asking me for tea several times a day. He began to invite me to go to lunch together in a cafe in the neighborhood. He congratulated me and my mother on my birthday with flowers. May treat me to some kind of delicacy. May, in the process of socializing, ostensibly accidentally grabbed my hand and pressed it to the table. Once, while helping me carry a load from one floor to another, contrived to palpate my chest with his hands, ostensibly to take it from my hands and help carry a few small items. For hours, he complained to me about his relatives and talked about books, interferes with my work and irritates me with his tedious monologues. His behavior seemed to me like flirting, but at the same time, he doesn't ask me out on a date or make an attempt to pay for me at a cafe at lunchtime. Grabbing my arms and breasts, though, could be casual. Who knows him? Besides, I know he has a girlfriend he's been dating for years. He's keeping quiet about her. Maybe he doesn't know I'm aware of it. I have another theory that he wants to gain a foothold in the team at my expense and show the management that he is my friend. Actually, I don't have any connections at work, and my mother is an ordinary employee. But this guy and I are treated well by the management directly, and I can theoretically praise or scold someone in front of the management, thus influencing their opinion of the person. Could this guy's good attitude be out of self-interest, or is he just a womanizer who has his eye on me? Or is this his way of trying to be friends since our moms are friends? Can a guy even just want to be friends with a girl he just met? I kind of believe in friendship between a man and a woman, but we're not in high school. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to me that a grown man only shows interest in a girl if he likes her. Meanwhile, the guy, despite his communication style, is cute. I feel that I am slowly starting to like him, I do not know how to behave further. My daughter from a previous marriage is more important to my husband than me. I married a wonderful man who is raising a child. We decided that we were going to live as a family 
and later I would have our baby together. My husband and I have a wonderful relationship, but recently a situation occurred that seemed to shatter my confidence in my marriage. We got together with all the family at the table, my husband's parents, friends, while just relaxing in nature. My husband's daughter said that she was cool with her father before me. Then my brother asked my husband, who would you choose, your wife or your daughter, my husband said. Of course the daughter, she's my priority. I thought it was a joke at first, and then I asked again, to which my husband replied, you're nice, we're good together, but daughter's the priority. I felt so hurt and ashamed for some reason, just imagine, sitting all the relatives and my husband, whom I trust, love and want to live my whole life, said this in front of everyone. I wanted to fall through the earth at that moment. I blushed so red with shame that they said that about me, that in public they didn't choose me. I understand that the child is always loved and important, but why talk like that in front of me and in front of everyone? I now analyze the situation, my behavior. Maybe I am like a little child, as if offended by the fact that of the two loved ones he chose not me. And maybe why such a husband, whom I have never been and will not be a priority. I want to forget this whole situation, but every time before I go to sleep I remember it. And it seems like, oh my God, what if something serious happens? I can be sure my husband will never choose me. I grew up in a family with lots of kids, and I also felt like my mom and dad had other kids that were younger than me. I wasn't irreplaceable. And now I'm not the most important one to my husband. It seems like I'm so destined to not be the only one all my life. For me, my mother is the only one in the world. My husband is the only one, and I am like a number for everyone, and I am not a priority for anyone. I also want someone to say about me that I am a priority, even my mother, even my friend, even my brothers, even for my husband, I am not a priority. I know I should have chosen a man without a past, but my husband also has the right to be loved with a child. Anything can happen. I'm not bitter about the baby because it's not his fault he was born and loved. I want to find the reason in myself why I was hurt by my husband's words that he would not choose me. Help me with advice or just tell me your opinion.